All right, in this video, I'll share with you three uh, incidents uh, where I spoke to the person. Uh, they did not end up being my client, but they did share the incident with me and uh, I thought I would share it with you. Obviously, I'm not going to share their private details. That is kept confidential. Okay, so there, there are these three people, uh, three different situations. Let me see if you can relate to them. The first one was... Um, I had this this lady who was dating a Indian guy. Uh, she is Filipina, and uh, she was telling me that, oh, this guy is so sweet. He's so nice. He's so loving. He wants to marry me, and um, you know all that other stuff. And all. I was like, um, okay, he wants to marry you and all that. Uh, but uh, what seems to be the issue? No, I'm not sure whether he's a good man or he's not a good man. I said, you are asking. <laughs> You're asking me, a person who has never met you online, who you're just seen my video, you're asking me about a guy you are physically meeting, spending time with and being with. Can you see the common sense in that? He's like, uh, so I told her, uh, like, do you see the logic? You can see the guy, you're spending time with the guy, but you don't trust him. Rather, you're trusting me, a guy you never met. She And she went like, no, because you, I've been following you for many years. I feel you tell the truth. You're being honest. You're being genuine. So then I said, okay, fine. What gave you that feeling that he's not genuine? No, he gives me a lot of sweet talk and he's so sweet. He's so caring. He's, he calls me babes. How are you? You know, I love you. Janu. He calls me Indian. Janu is like darling. Uh, every day is checking on me. Every day he is giving me sweet messages, poems and all that. And you said in your video, if a guy does this, it's not practical. It's not possible. So I said, yeah, so you're getting the message. She's saying, but I wanted to hear it from you. So with, with your logical listening. So I told her, my dear, it's very simple. Okay. I told her very, what is your age? She told me her age was somewhere in her thirties. This is what I told her. Okay, listen, I have a daughter. I have a daughter who is currently five years old. Okay, now imagine the girl becomes big and she is 16 or 17 or 18. Okay, and she comes and tells me this boy really loves me. He loves me like mad. He loves me. He'll die for me. He calls me every day. He'll love, love, love. And he says he can't breathe without me. And my daughter believes that this is true love. So I asked her, if you are the mother, would you say that this college boy, this boy who's 16, her age, does he truly love her? She said, no, of course not. He is immature. He's only 16. What has he seen of life? Okay. So that is one. Now, agree that your boyfriend is not 16. He's in 30s. But let's go to the next one. I said, what do you think this boy wants from my daughter if he says, I love you? She said, obviously, it's sex. I said, yeah, because a man wants sex. And if a man gets, you know, giving sweet words, if he can get a girl to open her legs, open her mouth, open all the orifices and for him to climax and enjoy, he has achieved what he wants by just giving sweet words. He's not giving anything else. If he was rich, yeah, he'd give some money, but he wants something. He's giving to get something, right? She said, yeah. So in the same way, your so-called boyfriend is giving you something, sweet words, attention to get something that is sex or companionship whatever so i told her that is the second thing so there's no free lunch and a guy will not spend his time effort and money for nothing he's not uh, a charitable human being a saint who just gives love to the whole world he's giving it to you because he wants something from you that's the second thing and third i told her this Everything has a honeymoon phase when things are sweet and nice and in the beginning, oh, I will love you. I will, you know, uh, uh, I want to give you pleasure day and night. You're my priority. I can't breathe without you. My heart beats for you and all that. I said, it is like the excitement you show when you're going to eat a pizza. Okay, that's the best example. When you think of a pizza, you think of a brand new pizza, you're like very excited. Oh, the crust, or oh, the crispy dough, or oh, the cheese, or oh, the juicy meat on top, or oh, the toppings, or oh, the creamy cheese, you know, the salty stuff, or oh, the spicy sauce. It's fun. It's enjoyable. The first two, three bites of a delicious pizza. My mouth is watering. I'm talking about it. 
But after the first slice and you ate it, mm, mm, you lick your fingers, then you go for the second slice. The second slice, the the pleasure or the you know peak, it's slightly reduced, you know, the, the satisfaction. And then still you might eat the second pizza, the slice. The third one, the pleasure goes even more less. The satisfaction level is even more less. And by the time you go to the fourth or halfway through the pizza, now the temperature has cooled off and you know, you're just eating because you're hungry. And then after that, the it keeps declining and then you don't enjoy it at all. Okay, you might finish the whole pizza, but I don't think you're going to order one more. And if you do order one more, first slice will be good. After that, everything will bland and boring. And by the time you finish maybe two pizzas, you're like, ah, enough, enough. I don't want to eat, I'm full. And then after you ate the pizza, you'll not think of a pizza for another one month. You'll be like, eh, I already had, man. Let's try Italian. Let's try uh, spaghetti. Let's try McDonald's. You'll try a new dish. Same thing with relationships. Initially, the excitement is there, the freshness, the crust, the juiciness, the taste of the cheese and, you know, it's newness. But after sex, 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 romance, romance, all that, you reach a point where, hi babes, hi, yeah, hi, whatever. You're not going to hug and kiss and smooch and, you know, cuddle that person. It happens in marriages. Initially, hey babes, how are you, darling? How was your day at office? You rush, you take her bags and make her sit, lie down and you give her a massage on the neck and oh, I love you so much. And you put her, put your hands inside her top and feel and then you have passionate sex and, you know, take off your clothes, thing on the sofa, you know, typical Hollywood movie where the fire is in the, you know, fire is burning and passionate sex. But imagine after five years of marriage, You'll be sitting and watching news. Okay. Your spouse comes in. Hey, honey, I'm home. Yeah, hi. And you'll be busy. Maybe you're playing a video game. Maybe you're sitting with your friends. And she's saying, what do you do? Nah, nothing. I'm just okay. Just can you get me a beer? You know, from the fridge. You know, that's, that's normal. That is how life is. So don't fall for this honeymoon phase is what I told her. Okay. And I told her, listen. You are dumb enough to believe that this romance is going to last forever. He's doing it just to get what he wants. Once he gets what he wants, then you'll get to see the real side. So I just told her, don't invest more than what you can afford to lose. Okay, that was point number one. The second uh, person uh, was this young man. He's uh, in his 20s and he wants a job in Dubai, UAE. Okay, fine. Okay. And then, um, you know, I always tell people, you want a job or whatever, send me your CV. If I'll check what it is, send me your salary expectation position. If there is anyone I know, I'll send it across to them. Fine. Okay. So he sent me uh, his details. And he sent me his salary expectation. And then he's like, uh, okay, imagine I've, I've told him, send me all this. He sends it to me. And then after that, he's like, okay, so what are you planning to do about it? He's asking me. I said, what am I planning? I'm not planning anything. If anyone asks for your service, I'll send you a CV. I'm not going to search for other people. And this cocky son of a bitch, he is telling me, what? Um, by the way, what are the services you provide, Loy? He's in his 20s, huh? So, Loy, what are the services you provide? I said, check my website. No, no, you tell me. I was not in a mood, but I was like, okay. Resume rebrand, interview coaching, job and strategy, huh? And he's telling me, what are the guarantees you offer? Guarantees for what? No, if I give you money, he's telling me, if I give you money, what are the guarantees you offer? I said, you'll be guaranteed a service. No, I want results. 20-year-old telling me, I want results. I said, what results are you searching for? If I pay you money, okay, I want a guaranteed job. I said, is there anywhere on my website that says, I take money and offer you guaranteed jobs? Then he said, then what is the use of your service? I said, I didn't ask you to take my service. You're the one inquiring. So then he's like, uh, hey man, listen, he's telling me, huh? hey man, you know, I'm telling I'm giving, take my, he's telling me, take my suggestion. If you start offering guaranteed jobs, you'll make business, you'll make money. This resume, who the hell cares? Today I can get a CV for free online. He's lecturing me, huh? this boy who is, this young man in his 20s who has not yet even got a job in Dubai. 
and uh, I just kept quiet and he's like you know I suggest I'm telling you start changing your strategy and uh, I was quiet until then and then he's like and uh, please you know uh, behave yourself not behave sorry what uh, stop this attention seeking uh, stuff that you're doing online um, he's saying I uh, people People who are really serious will not take you seriously. And he started to lecture me, this 20-year-old guy. I finally, I was like, uh, you know, because I'm doing work. He's chatting here. Finally, I told him, excuse me, are you feeling all right? I asked him, are you feeling all right? He's like, why? I said, you're searching for a job. You came to me. And now you bloody give me advice. He's saying, he's telling me, Man, you should learn to take uh, suggestions. You know, that's how you become. I just told, I wanted to tell him, fuck off. I wanted to seriously tell him. I just blocked him. Now, if the story ended there, it would have been fine. I blocked him because I don't want to listen to this shit. The guy has the audacity to send me an email. Okay, he sends me an email and uh, he's telling, uh, hey, you insecure motherfucker, there's that and all the bad words he sends. And, uh, you know, sometimes there's a line you should not cross. So what I did is, he, I have a CV, right? I know where he has worked. I just told him, all your these employers are going to get a copy of what you've sent me. All these employees, in, from LinkedIn to everyone else. Okay? You're going to get a copy of this. And this is going to completely destroy everything that you want to build a foundation on. In fact, I managed to uh, get his profile because obviously profile is uh, Facebook and all that. So I told him, I'll make sure everyone gets a snapshot of this. There he realized he was in trouble. And then obviously the profuse apology. Hey, first it was like, hey, don't you dare, I'm going to threaten you. I said, no problem, we'll see. But because he realized his mistake, he sent an apology and I decided, fine, let go. But you see what I'm trying to get at? See, I don't take any pleasure. I don't have time. Basically, I don't have time for all this bullshit. But do you see a 20-year-old, how cocky a person can get? And then he's wondering why he's not getting a job. <sighs> Last, if not the least, it was... Uh, ah, by the way, this guy, the same guy... When he was asking for my service, he's telling me, okay, let's talk, let's discuss the pricing strategy. If if you can give me 50% off, I can provide you with some bullshit, uh, some what? I will do a graphical design for your logo or some shit. I'll do the SEO. He was trying to give me all business talk. Put the SEO up your ass here. Yeah. I don't fucking need it. Like, I know you're trying to be enterprising, but you're a bloody kid. Like they say, no, don't teach your father how to fuck. Then the last one was this. I can't understand. This one was the biggest mystery of all. This man, he was telling me that, uh, Loy, Mr. Loy, I want to inquire about your service. You know, my son wants to get a job and this and that. And he's talented, he's smart and this and that. Okay, okay, fine. Yeah, he's God's gift to mankind. Yeah, what can I do for you? Yeah, my son is, you know, based in... USA and he's number one, he's smart and he's sought after all these companies. And then if he's so smart and he's sought after, then why is he really getting to no, know? But I want him to get a job in Dubai. Oh, okay, fine. All right. Now imagine the father is speaking on behalf of the son. And then he, I tell him, okay, send me your son's CV. Let me see what I can do. Okay. He sent. Now this is where I got shocked. His son, who he's speaking on behalf of, who's very talented and all that. His son is 40 plus years old. 4-0. When I saw that, I was like, what the? 40 years old? And then I asked him, excuse me, how old are you? The guy is 70 plus. And then I asked him, why are you doing it on behalf of your son? No, 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 my son... Uh, uh, I just want to do it because I care about him. I said, boss, boss, stop, stop, stop. 
you are 70 years old 70 plus your son is 40 he's a man he's he's a grown ass man he's as old as me and you are searching for a job for him and you are speaking on behalf of him he should be fucking asking for me no 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 you know life is so unpredictable it's not like in india here we have to support and all that he is bloody pampering his son and then i found out his son stays with him he pays his expenses he's babysitting his son i just told him boss I don't think I can accept your son as a client because if this is the way you're treating him, he's not grown up and I don't think he'll appreciate an iota of what I'm doing. You're just wasting your fucking time here. I was shocked. Imagine someone at the age of fucking 40 needs his dad to do the talking. I've met even ladies who are speaking on behalf of their husbands and husbands who are talking on behalf of the... Like, this lady, her husband was uh, somewhere 50s or something and she's saying, uh, can you help my husband? And I was like, yeah, why don't your husband call me? No, he doesn't like you. Huh? Okay. Then why you like me? No, no, I, I feel you are a good man. But if I tell him that uh, I approached you, he will not at all do anything. So you tell me, I will tell my husband. And then I had this other guy who wanted his wife to get a job. And he wants me to do the rebranding, whatever. I said, ask your wife to get in touch with me. No, 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 no. My wife, I don't want her talking to any man. You you talk to me. Why you want to talk to my wife? I was like, what? If, these are the kind of nut cases. And then I got this one. A father is 70 years old. His baby, his small boy, is 40 years old. I was like, eh, not going to work out. So in the end, I told him, boss, it's not going to work out. Don't waste your time. You're wasting your time. You're wasting my time. Just go get your son. Let him stay with you for the rest of your life. If you have money, I think that is best. So anyway, these were the three crazy cases. Not clients, but crazy cases of people. I hope you learned something of value. Let me know what do you think. Do you think I was right? Do you think I was wrong? Feel free to comment down below. Love to read your thoughts. It's me signing off. Ciao. My crazy world.